Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, White Coats and Corgis. Today I have a really, really special video for you guys. I'm actually going to be doing a tour of the Harvard Medical School campus hosted by a current first year medical student. And she's going to be giving me all the tea about what she did to get accepted into Harvard and go into some detail about what you can do as a pre-med if you are interested in attending an institution like this. I am so excited to show you guys all that I learned. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Hi everybody, I'm Olivia. I'm an MS2 here at Harvard Medical School. Welcome to campus. Hi everyone, a little bit about Harvard's curriculum. So it's in with one of those earlier waves of schools where we have a expedited curriculum of sorts. So your first year you're in the classroom, it's actually in the building right in front of me here. Um, so you spend about a year and a couple of months in the classroom, it's flipped classroom. So no lectures, you do the prep beforehand and then you come to class and work through problems with your classmates. After a little over a year of that, you transition into the hospital, which is right behind this building, at least my hospital is, and you spend a full year doing all of your core clerkships like a traditional med student would. After that, you now have your third and fourth year to tailor your experience to how you want it to be. That's why it's called the Pathways Program, because there's no two same pathways to get your MD here at Harvard. Medical Education Building? Center? Center. We call it TMEC for short. Haven't said the full name in a while. So this is where I spent about every day, Monday through Friday, for the first full year of med school and a couple months afterwards. That's that pre-clinical, in the classroom time um, that every medical student will get to experience. Mine was just a little bit shorter than most. So we're going through my morning walk. It's a little dark here. It's also dark in the mornings. Um, class usually starts at 8.30, and then as you progress, each block starts a little earlier. Um, still never made sense to me, but I guess they're preparing us for the wards, which I'm on now, and my days now start at like 6.30. So um, perfect, actually. This is my society. So Harvard Medical School's first year classes are separated into societies which really just mean a group of like 40 or 50 students that you do your classes with every single day. So we alternated around amongst tables and I can walk in there and show you guys sort of where we sat based on each block and how we did class. So this is Castle. Um, for any Harvard folks watching this, I'm a proud Castle member. Um, but this is where I sat every single day for about a, a year and change. Um, tables of four, sort of sit down. Um, there's TVs in every corner. So you can always see the slideshow presentation and you're working with your classmates. There'd be a question on the board. We'd sort of bring it in as a team, unpack what our thoughts were, the information we gathered from our sort of reviewing of the material the night before. And then as a class, we'd all get together again and pass around a microphone. And we always have a faculty member to sort of make sure we get to where we're supposed to get by the end. Um, but I loved it. It was a great way to stay engaged with the material and I really felt in control of my knowledge. So one of the big questions myself, a lot of my classmates, and really anyone who's ever gotten into medical school ever gets asked, how the heck did you get in? 
Um, I remember asking that question up until I got my first acceptance, thinking I can still change something to make it work and help me get one step closer to my dream of coming to med school. Um, what really worked for me was looking to others who have done it before for help and support. Um, and I can talk more about that in a second. But two was getting in touch with who I am and what the process of finding medicine has brought me to as a person, because I'm writing down my entire essence of my being on a couple of sheets of paper and hoping that someone gets it. So I should at least get it first. Um, and I liked to sort of wrap my head around it as identifying with a sort of what is my personal brand and not in the sense of clothing or whatever, but like, what are my values? What do those break down to? And how can I best demonstrate those in the activities that I do and the words that I'm saying on paper and who better to go to and fact check those things and make sure that I'm sort of articulating myself best than people who have done it. I used a lot of mentors through my undergraduate institution um, and some great experts like those found at Med School Coach. That is some awesome advice from Olivia, and there is a lot more to come. But first, I wanted to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Med School Coach. I am so, so happy to be working with this company. I've worked with them for several years now, and I can honestly say that the help they offer students is second to none. A med School Coach is a company that is sort of like a one-stop shop for everything you need from being a pre-med to getting into medical school and then being in medical school trying to get into residency. They have services, free resources, all kinds of different things for people at every stage in the process of becoming a physician. As you can see from the top row of options on their website, they start with MCAT tutoring and there's a lot of different prep options that they offer, a lot of free resources as well for MCAT, and then they do medical school admissions as well as residency admissions consulting. So if you have any questions about the process of applying to medical school, they will pair you with a mentor who has actually been accepted and gone through the process at a school that you actually want to be in so they can kind of guide you through the process and you can have someone to hold your hand and help you with things like editing essays and you can just sort of ask random questions that way you feel comfortable about the process and you know that you're putting your best foot forward and then in addition to that they also have USMLE and Comlex tutoring and then finally this tab up here called free resources this is an absolute gold mine and I would encourage everybody to pause the video open up a new tab and go find this because it is so, so helpful. Here is what the tab looks like when you open it, and they have awesome things here for pre-med, such as virtual shadowing, and you can actually go through and shadow over 20 different specialties. So if you're curious about dermatology or gastroenterology or something that maybe you don't have access to shadowing for, this is a great opportunity to learn more about that specialty, and you can also get a certificate at the end if you want to count the hours for medical school. Then they have all sorts of guidebooks on all different kinds of topics. This is super, super helpful if you want more kind of in-depth guidance. They have a pre-med A to Z course that you can actually go through and learn all about the admissions process. You can learn about your odds of acceptance through the MSC score. They have their brand new med school explorer, so you can learn about all the different medical schools and what their stats are, location bias, all that important stuff that you should know before making your school list. And then finally, an MCAT masterclass where you can actually go through and get access to all these free lessons to teach you the content review needed for the MCAT. So like I said, this is a gold mine. Definitely save this website. And thank you so much to Med School Coach for sponsoring this video. Another big question, what extracurriculars have you done? A lot of people can tell you, you should shadow, get exposure to medicine, and no one's ever just blunt about what the heck they did. I can give you my three most meaningful activities that I did. Um, one of them was working as the manager of a care program in the state of New York. Um, I worked with patients with Parkinson's disease every single day, not necessarily doing the nitty gritty of their care management, um, but enrolling them in this really great free program where they could get free care and interacting them with them throughout all the stages of their care, sort of being that source of consistency as they were navigating many different providers, which I really loved. Um, I also loved working with the deaf community. So I was a sort of classroom assistant um, for a deaf school in Rochester, New York. And I also managed to work in sort of a volunteer role where I just wrote poems with some folks at a senior home across the street from my college. Every Wednesday, me and one gentleman sort of wrote poetry together. And I had no experience in writing and neither did he. Half the fun was just getting to know him and his story, um, but it was a really meaningful experience to me.
<laughs> more of a social space. It looks like they had an event here not too long ago, but between classes, um, we have class 8.30 to noon, um, but there's usually like a 30 minute block in between where you can come up here, get lunch at the Atrium Cafe, um, get warm up your lunch in the microwaves. There's a vending machine that I've spent an embarrassing amount of money on. Uh, but yeah, this is where we all come hang out on the big call. Now that we're standing in front of the Study and Collaboration Center, which I spent probably like 50%, no, probably 25% of my time studying in. Um, I'm a group studier, and this tends to be a more quiet zone. Um, but on that note, a couple of study skills that really helped me excel in my undergrad career and some that I definitely needed to pick back up again in medical school were spaced repetition. I know it's like the thing that is written everywhere, but it's so true. Um, whether you were averse to Anki like myself and sort of went the old fashioned route and just did the spacing on your own, or if you've succumbed to the beast that is Anki like I have now, um, it's really good to test yourself early and often. It's okay to get it wrong, you sort of get used to the beating pretty early on, um, but it really pays off in the long run. Okay, um, welcome to Anatomy. Um, these are the doors, I can't take you inside, um, although it is a privilege to be in there throughout uh, all of our first year, and then it's sprinkled in in bits and pieces throughout third and fourth and fifth year. What am I saying? <laughs> it's a privilege to be in there um, throughout my entire first year, and then it's also sprinkled in throughout second, third, and fourth year. Um, but the primary experience, we do prosections here and not dissections, so you prepare, the day before, similar to all of the other classes, do your prep, and then when you come in, you sort of walk in, um, acknowledge the privilege that you have to walk into an anatomy lab and work with the donors that we have, um, and then there's sort of guided exams that you get to do on all of the donors that we have and sort of examine the anatomy of each patient, and then the anatomy is incorporated into exams that you have every so often in that particular block. Now that we're in one of my favorite study rooms here on campus, um, like I mentioned, I don't study too often in the collaboration center. I like a quieter space, um, but where I can study independently with others. Uh, we're in a nice room that's accommodating of that. Um, one of my classmates actually is studying for her OBGYN shelf pretty soon. Uh, on the topic, um, a little different actually, we can talk about some interview tips. Um, or a general sense of what my interviews were like up to this point and especially what my interview was like here. And the answer that you probably heard a bunch of times but that really reigns true is that the majority are so warm and welcoming. Everybody wants you to be here. Um, every medical school, if they've offered you an invitation, is seriously considering your candid candidacy at their institution. And that's definitely how I felt when I came here. It really helped to look at the interview as not just them interviewing me, but me interviewing them. For me, I had never left my hometown prior to moving to Boston, a pretty big city compared to where I'm from. And so I had to really evaluate this place, these people, this institution, and ask myself, can I be here for the next four years and maybe longer? 
The answer is yes. Um, I love it here and maybe hopefully I'll stay a little bit longer, but um, really look at it from that perspective and do your due diligence to evaluate the school as much as they're evaluating you. And two, do lots of mock interviews. They may seem silly and they may seem uncomfortable, but they're so, so, so helpful. What better way to see how you'll perform on game day than to practice? and it helps to record them. It's a trick that I try to do whenever I'm working with students, um, but it really helps you see your mannerisms. And if you couldn't tell already, one of mine was talking with my hands um, and that <laughs> sort of worked its way through and I was able to sort of modify those things to help me land the schools that I landed and get to this chair right here. For the specific HMS interview, from what I recall, it was over a year ago, you get your invitation, exciting, you cry many tears of joy, and then you do your preparation. And when the day comes, usually the week of, they'll send you tons of emails saying, come to these meet and greets with students. Um, my first year, I did a lot of those, just getting on Zoom and interacting with all of the applying students, getting ready for their interviews. We often caught them like the day before their interview, and that really helped me. I did one the week before, uh, and then one the day before, just to hear from students. One, see if they're happy, are they smiling? And two, ask them, what was your experience? How was your interview day? So I'll give you a little bit of that inside scoop, considering you're in front of me now. Once you join, um, if I recall correctly, it's sort of a full Zoom day, at least it was when I did it. Uh, you get a beautiful overview of who is HMS, what is the layout of the curriculum, which I've given you a taste of, but they'll go well into detail, they'll have great visuals. Take this opportunity to soak in the fact that you're interviewing at a medical school in general. Huge, huge deal. As you're doing so, try to jot down some questions, get an idea of, do I understand the curriculum fully? Do I see myself fitting inside of it? Uh, once they talk about the curriculum, they'll try their best to give you a Zoom tour of the campus. Um, take that as you may. It's gorgeous here nonetheless, just take their word for it. And after that, you'll sort of break off into other information sessions. You will might be here from ORMA, our Office of Multicultural Recruitment um, and Affairs. So they might talk about what their work is with the student body. You'll, you'll definitely hear from all of the deans, the deans of medical education, the dean of student affairs, um, and other offices like that, just hearing about what their resources are. And then the big scary part is you'll break off into traditional interviews. They were in my time, and I presume they're here to stay. Um, you'll talk to about two different faculty members. I didn't speak with students in my go round, but some of my classmates did. And it's a traditional interview. The typical, tell me about yourself. What was your experience like finding medicine? Why Harvard or why insert your school's name? Um, and they also asked me details about the things that I wrote in my application. So some of my most meaningful activities, they said, tell me more about this. Why did you pick it? What makes you think that that experience makes you ready for med school? Um, all of these questions were ones I had prepared for through doing mock interviews with as many people and as many experts as possible. Some of the ones exist at Med School Coach. And so once you've done that, your traditional interviews are over, take a deep breath, you'll have a sort of closing session and they'll say, thanks guys and see you in your inbox when you hear your admissions decision.